All right, everyone, today's video is going to be the top five biggest tips to have a better experience and more fun overall in Kingdom Come Deliverance. Kingdom Come Deliverance, for those that don't know, is a freshly released and Kickstarter funded medieval RPG. It's got very realistic elements and it strives to have some degree of historical accuracy as well. I think it's a unique entry into the genre and I do enjoy the game greatly. However, in a whole separate video, eventually I will talk about the game's many flaws. All that aside though, this is going to be the top five biggest tips to just have more fun, to play better, to overcome some of those flaws, and to just have a stronger character. Tip number five. Don't always fight and definitely do not always kill opponents. This is not your typical hack and slash RPG. There are a lot more complex elements at play here. Things like trading, talking to vendors, various other quests and the other NPCs, things like alchemy, the ability to read all come into play. And when you are fighting and killing every single person that you see, your reputation can be negatively impacted. A lower reputation means that you will sometimes have to pay NPCs just for the right to speak to them, which can hinder your gameplay a great deal. So when you are fighting or when you're just traversing the environment, make sure that you are not always as confrontational as you could be. Don't just whip out your sword and hack away at every single person that walks across your path, because what that will do is paint you into a corner and cut down on your possibilities in game. Sometimes combat is the only option. However, those times are few and far between. The action can also be a little bit more slow paced and you might not encounter fights as often as you would like. The game is not for everyone in that regard. It's not a heavy emphasis on combat. But the biggest tip here is do not always be fighting. The second half to this tip is that you should not always be looting dead bodies. Even if you are forced to draw your sword, forced to enter combat, and you slay your opponent, you should not necessarily loot their corpse. This is an activity that has kind of been, you know, ingrained in us in very similar games for a long period of time that you should always loot corpses and get as much gear as possible. But in Kingdom Come Deliverance, it is a very frowned upon activity. Even when looting and selling all of the gear that a dead body has, you will likely cost yourself more in necessary bribes after the fact and lost gameplay time and lost NPC reputation than you gained from getting all of that gear. So a good rule of thumb is only fight if you need to or if it's some you know particular moment where you really wish to draw your sword and make a statement. And if you do fight, think twice about looting the body. It may have just a couple of gold on it, it may have a cool weapon or a piece of armor that you want, but it also comes with a cost. Tip number four, carry with you multiple sets of clothing and wash your character regularly. In the game, there are a lot of different armor and gear slots, such as arm armor, leg armor, chest pieces, hoods, helmets, all of these different things. But while wearing all of this gear, it has a chance to become dirty. You can sometimes get it splattered with blood if you are entering combat a lot. And there's a lot of different downsides to wearing all of these different pieces of armor. If I scroll down through my character sheet, and if you look at my stats on the right, you can see that my speech and my charisma are at 7, and my speed is at 19. However, if I scroll down to a fancy shirt that I got from a noblewoman during one of the quests, if I were to put that shirt on and then remove some of the other gear that I have on my character, you will see that my charisma stat will end up rising and going up to now 9, and it can go up even further. Now my charisma stat is at 11, and I believe it can go a little bit further with a couple of other boosts, but just from simply wearing a nobleman's shirt, which isn't very dirty, and removing all of my other armor pieces, my charisma has gone up in its value, allowing me to negotiate better at vendors and achieve more desired results when talking to various NPCs. Part two to this tip is washing regularly. As you can see in this bucket, there is a great deal of water, and this is the type of bucket that is present in a lot of different towns and different social areas. You can wash yourself in these, albeit not so well, and this will again increase the amount of charisma that you have, it will improve the reaction of various NPCs and vendors and quest uh, givers to you. They will not turn their noses up at you if you don't smell bad, uh, and it will have a positive impact on how you interact with other people. A better version of this is to go to a bathhouse where you can launder your clothes and wash a great deal better. Now, at this bathhouse, you can see uh, that I have to pay her in order to talk to her and use the services. That is because, unlike how I advised in tip number five, I have been attacking pretty much everyone that I come across. I've killed beggars, I've killed 
wayfaring, you know, helpless monks. I have been a criminal in this game. So people don't really want to talk to me. But if you follow tip number five, then you wouldn't necessarily have to pay her 210 gold up front in order to simply speak to her. But once you can talk to her, once you do have better reputation, or if you have the money, you can use the bathhouse services and you can launder your clothes and, uh, you know, clean your body off and you will have a much, much better result when interacting with noblemen or talking to various other vendors, etc. You can also pay for other goods and services, which I will not do right now, which will give you a boost to your charisma overall and will help you interact even further. So if you have the coin, a bathhouse is the place to go. The last part to this tip is cleaning blood off of weapons. And for some purposes, this is actually a good thing to keep the blood on there. If you're trying to intimidate people, um, you know, bully them into taking your side or to, you know, conforming to your will, then this is a good thing and you should leave it there. However, when you're in town, when you're interacting with any normal civilized people, uh, when you're trying to trade, when you're trying to buy goods and services, which is a large portion of the game, this is going to be decidedly negative and much more negative than you may think. Unfortunately, you can't just take a, a damp cloth and wipe the blood off. You actually have to go to a grindstone at any blacksmith or weaponsmith. You sit down uh, and you sharpen the sword. This will remove the blood. Uh, it's a little bit of a mini game here. It's not very hard to do. Uh, you simply use both triggers back and forth and adjust the, uh, the angle of the sword. And eventually it will be cleaned and the blood will be gone. Once it's gone, then you can interact with people normally and it won't detract from your, uh, from your charisma. It won't detract from the experience. Tip number three, inventory management. While out in this field gathering herbs and materials uh, and picking flowers, you can see that I've become over encumbered. I can't sprint, I can't run, and side note, uh, when gathering herbs here, as you can see when I pick this dandelion, I actually pick all of the dandelions in a very large radius around me, which is extremely useful. Uh, and the herblore experience or the uh, herbalism experience, as it's properly called, is extremely valuable to get. When you're picking flowers, you can gather tons of them at the same time. Uh, and this kind of speaks to tip number one, that this game is much more about, you know, various skills and about life in the Middle Ages than it is about combat. So pay attention to all of these other skills. You can brew some really great potions, which comes into effect later. Uh, but while gathering, as you can see, I am completely over encumbered. I can barely move. What you should be doing is managing your inventory by use of the horse. When I press the Y skill um, on PS4, it's something different, but you can summon your horse once you have one, and he will come to you wherever you may be. It's very easy to call him. And then you can use his inventory to leapfrog over uh, and get your, your materials and get large quantities of stuff and, and loot over to stash boxes. As you can see in my inventory, I have the option to send the dandelions over to my horse. Uh, by pressing X, I can move them to my horse, and then I can select the quantity with which I want to do that. And because of my high um, herbalism experience and my high level there, I can pick them at an accelerated rate. This is worth a lot of money here. Uh, 798 of them adds up quite quick. Uh, so I can send all of them to my horse uh, as much as I can, actually. I can't send all of them at the moment because there are so many and my horse is already carrying a bunch of things. Um, but you can empty out your horse's inventory. You can send various quantities to your horse uh, and then use him to leapfrog to a stash box. The stash boxes that I am talking about are these. Anywhere that you have a bed set up that is rightfully yours, whether it be a tavern that you've purchased a room at, uh, or the mill, or any other location for that matter, there should be a chest there which is kind of magically connected via some otherworldly network. And in that chest, you can store all of the things that you, uh, that you want to and don't want to carry around with you, but that you still want to maintain access to and keep uh, relatively available. So all you need to do is go outside here and summon your horse. Your horse will appear. Uh, here he is. And then you can transfer all of the items that you were over encumbered with loaded into his inventory uh, to your own inventory. If we scroll over to horse here, then we can go down. We can gather all of these items up, uh, bring them over to our own inventory, and then bring them inside and store them in the chest. It may take a little bit of time, but this is a lot better than lugging it all around yourself. Uh, and it can make things a lot more convenient and a lot faster. Grab all the items from your horse, and then it's a very short walk, and you walk very slowly because you are so over-encumbered, but a short walk back over to your stash where you can dump all of the items, and they will no longer be of concern until you need them. Tip number two. 
Regardless of how you play, it is highly likely that at some point in your gameplay experience or your playthrough, you will encounter stolen items. Uh, you will come into possession of stolen items. And if you get searched while you have those items, you will get in trouble. You'll have to pay a fine. You'll have to turn those items over. And if you have a really cool sword that you want to keep, if you have really cool armor and it's all marked as stolen, the uh, enemy guards and the enemy NPCs have this miraculous ability to always sense with their spidey senses that it is stolen. Uh, so you need to clean those items. You need to get them to be registered as not stolen, uh, and you need to properly secure them. The number one way to do this, and the fastest way to do this, is to come to this NPC right here. Miller, uh, I, I'm not going to pronounce this name correctly, but he is a Miller. He has the white hat on, and for reference, I will show you where he is on the map. Um, he is right here on the map. He's north of Rate and right around this area of the river bend, right across a little ford and near a dam. Uh, you do have to do a couple of very short quests in order to unlock him. You have to do a quest for the miller over here at the at the Rate mill, and then you can come up here, you do one thing for him, and he will then buy and sell your stolen goods. So, as you can see, I'll go to my inventory. I have 20 stolen pork here just for demonstrational purposes. If I were to go to him, I talk, uh, he will give me the option of then selling my stolen goods to him, and I will be uh, able to profit from them. So if I scroll over to sell, I go and I sell all 20 of the pork. Um, he will buy them, and I can get my profit. He won't buy them for, for very much, but you will still end up making a profit. And then, if I want to, I can talk to him immediately again after... Uh, and you're also able to see here, because I've sold a lot of goods to him in the in the recent past, you will be able to see that there are all these other items that he has. I can now buy the item back from him, and it will no longer be quote-unquote stolen. It still is in reality, uh, but the game no longer registers it as stolen. So if I get a really cool sword that I want to keep, if I get a really cool piece of armor, um, I can go, I can sell it to this miller here. Uh, I can buy back one of the pork here, and you'll be able to see. And if we go to the basket, confirm the trade, uh, it will no longer be a stolen piece of pork. So you can do this with whatever items you want, uh, and it will clean the item. Uh, you will then, you know, pass it through him. It will no longer be dirty or stolen, and you can keep it. You can be searched by guards, and it won't be anything out of the ordinary. It now belongs to you. The second way to dispose of stolen goods is to simply put them in your stash, like I've talked about before. Uh, the chest at any one of your bed locations can contain stolen goods and it won't be searched. If you're in town trying to buy and sell or trying to complete quests and you have those stolen goods, it's a liability. So you can toss any stolen goods that you have into your vault or into your chest, but then you will need to wait a significant amount of in-game time, sometimes upwards of a week for people to forget that the goods are stolen and for uh, you know village people to move on. So you can clean them this way. It just takes a lot, uh, a lot more time to do so. The last and by far the most valuable tip that I have is save your schnapps, which is the proper way to save your game. Now you can save your game when you sleep in a bed, but even then it's hit or miss. Sometimes it will not actually save. Uh, and then you can go through an entire quest line sometimes. I mean, periodically during quests, it again has a chance to save your game, but sometimes it glitches out. Um, other times it just doesn't happen altogether. And you can go through whole quest chains and, and play for upwards of 45 minutes or more uh, and then die and then lose all of that progress and go back to the last time that you slept in a bed. Now, save your schnapps is the one way to counteract this. When you eat save your schnapps, it will create a save game file. When you do that, you can come back to that point at any time that you wish. Uh, so these are extremely valuable. And in a game as buggy as this, there are a lot of glitches and bugs in this game that can result in lost progress. You want to have one save your schnapps on you at all times. There should never be a point where you're running around completing quests, slaying enemies, doing anything where you do not have one of those potions. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to acquire them. You can acquire Savior Schnapps by crafting them with the alchemy skill. Uh, you can whip up the potions yourself. You can acquire them by looting. You can steal them from various places. Uh, you can get them a variety of ways, but the most reliable is by crafting them yourself with the alchemy skill. Now, you do need to know how to read for this. I don't know how to read very well. As you can see, the words are a bit jumbled, um, but the recipe is fairly simple. 
Uh, as soon as I know fully how to read this recipe, which is just a couple of minutes away, if I do another uh, side quest, read a few more books, then I'll be able to craft these with one nettle and two belladonna uh, extremely easily. And those are very, very common ingredients. So save your schnapps. The best way is to learn how to craft them, learn how to read, uh, and then craft them at an alchemy station. Other than that, though, you get a few at the beginning of the game, and you should be using those as best you can. You don't necessarily need to use them all that often, but you should carry them with you at all times. So you get three, I believe, at the very early stages of the game uh, from one of the uh, one of the maidens at the inn, and you should always keep two in your sash and one on you, or one in your stash and one on you, but have one. Because when one of the doors glitches out, um, sometimes, you know, doors can, can glitch and you won't be able to walk through them. And if I were to try to get through this door, it would register as open, but then it would be closed. You can get stuck in rooms. Um, you can get stuck on bushes and oftentimes reloading the game will fix that problem. So if you have a save your snaps on you, then you don't lose any progress. You can use it and then reload to that save. They are by far the most valuable item in the game. Not to mention the fact that they're also worth quite a bit of coin. Uh, so you can use them as a store of wealth. As soon as you can craft them, then you can buy the ingredients, craft them, and you will be able to, uh, you know, store a great deal of items that are worth a lot of coin in your stash without actually having the coin and carrying it around. That's going to wrap it up for these top five tips on how to play Kingdom Come Deliverance and things that new players will need to know to make their gameplay experience better. I really do like the game, but it has a few problems. At the moment, there are various main quests which are completely bugged, and to those players that are coming through looking for ways to, to unbug their game or to get by, you know, a black infinite loading screen that can sometimes pop up, uh, there is a fix coming in about two weeks from what I've gathered from outside sources uh, and from reading up on the game in various articles and from Twitter feeds. So there should be a fix coming soon. I think that what they're trying to do with this game is phenomenal historically. Uh, accurate with a spider web of different possibilities. Sometimes you are making choices in this game without even realizing that you are making those choices. Uh, and it really is an interesting experience. And it's cool to support a game that was funded, crowdfunded through Kickstarter. So I have to say, despite some of the, well, the many flaws and some of the dysfunctional elements to it, uh, it is a fun experience and it's trying to do, some, to do something different uh, and I really respect that. So let me know down below in the comments if you think that this was useful at all. Uh, I tried to put in as much valuable information as possible, especially to help new players. Let me know as well in the comments if there are other games that you would like to see me cover. I'm trying to branch out and expand and do a lot of beginner guides on different titles. Uh, so if there's something else you'd like to see me cover and would like my take on, don't hesitate to let me know. I will try and incorporate that. Uh, as always, check out the different communities. Consider checking out the patron page as well. YouTube is unreliable at this point. Um, you know, we have a great Facebook community. We have a great website and forum community there. And we'll try to expand and bring a presence to this game as well as many others. And uh, that's about it. I'll stop ranting. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, have a nice night.